Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Jensen's. I hope that you're well. With so many elixir fragrances on the market, I figured it's time for a battle of the elixirs. And today I have 10 of the biggest designer fragrance elixir flankers. And I'm gonna tell you guys which ones I think are worst and work my way all the way up to the very best one. Yes, elixirs. <laughs> Now, as time goes, obviously there's going to be more new elixirs that come out. I don't know how many, but you gotta figure there's gonna be more. So maybe in the future, I'll have to do a redone list where there's like 10 more elixirs. But for now, we're gonna keep it with the 10 biggest ones that are out right now. All of these will be linked in the description below from worst to best. So feel free to check them out down there. Let's get started. Starting off with number 10, which is in my opinion, the worst elixir right now and it may come as no surprise that my choice is ysl y elixir i could make like a really bad dad joke about why elixir why i'm not gonna do it but why does why elixir come in last place for me well number of reasons first off the pricing 180 dollars for the 60 mil size bottle puts it at basically the very top of the elixir pricing scale, along with some other fragrances that we'll talk about here in a little bit. It doesn't have a 100 ml bottle available yet as of when I'm shooting this video, but if it follows the same pricing as Dior Sauvage Elixir, it's gonna be $250 for the 100 ml size bottle. And I'm guessing that's what it's gonna be since the 60 ml size is priced the same as Sauvage Elixir is. Now this doesn't smell bad. And actually the overwhelming majority of elixir fragrances that have come out actually do smell smell really good by and large. But while it doesn't smell bad, to me, it's not as good as Y Eau de Parfum or Y Le Parfum. And those fragrances are both way cheaper than this one and also outperform this one as well. They project harder, they last longer, they'll get you noticed more often. This is basically why if you dialed down the sweetness, bumped up the aromatics a little bit and made it a slightly more reserved, sophisticated scent. Oh, and it also says that it has oud in there and I'm not getting any oud. Some people say they do, I don't. So why Elixir? Last place. Easily, this was one of the three Elixir fragrances that I was looking forward to the most when it was announced and it's the one that has let me down the most. They just need a, a redo. Before we hop to the next fragrance, here are a bunch of codes you can use to save money across different websites. So you can buy your fragrances at any of these stores, use these codes to save some money. I've got codes that'll save you between 10 and 20% off at Max Aroma, Twisted Lily, Triple Traders, The Perfume Box, FragFlex.com, and more. All right, number nine, the second worst elixir, which actually, I don't think is a bad fragrance. I like this one. In the first impressions, I said as much, but it does have similarities to a bunch of other things out there, so it loses some points because of that. It's Bad Boy Cobalt Elixir from Carolina Herrera. This one retails for $153 for a 100 ml size bottle, so you get more fragrance than Y Elixir for a lower cost. And obviously, all of these fragrances at some point will be at fragrance discounters for less than the retail cost. Some of them are available there now, others aren't, but they all eventually should be. So as I said, I actually like this fragrance. It smells nice, has a good vanilla scent profile to it. A uh, little touch of earthiness in there also, but it still has a very nice wearability to it, good versatility to it, especially for the cooler months. Bad Boy is a line that in general just doesn't get any respect, it seems like, uh, at least until Cobalt came out. That one was decently well received. And this one at first was catching some hate, but as time has gone on, more people have come around to like it. And I do think it's solid. I actually really like this one a good amount. It's just, you know, it's up against some really, really, really good scents. So I'm gonna put it right there, but I don't feel good about it. All right, the next one I, I also don't really feel good about having it this low. It's Guilty Elixir from Gucci. This one's pricey. This is $183 for a 60 ml size bottle. So it's a whole three bucks more than Y Elixir. I don't really understand why they felt like they had to make it 183 and not just 180, but that's what it is. So like I said, I don't feel good about having this one down here because the quality of this is really nice. Whereas Y Elixir, I'm a little iffy on if 
the cost to quality ratio is really there. Like it smells decent quality, but I don't know that it smells that much higher quality than Wild Lip Parfum, for example. But anyway, back to this one, I feel like the quality is there. When you smell it, it smells of quality. It has a very prominent white floral scent profile to it. Actually, a lot of people have compared this to the smell of Amouage Reflection Man. So it's kind of in that wheelhouse. I think it smells very nice. Uh, the main issue here is that I think that for a lot of people, it may not be quite as easily worn as the fragrances above it, or honestly, these fragrances over here also. It stands out a good amount against everything else. Like it smells pretty unique other than the whole reflection man thing. It's very difficult. Part of me wants to move it up, but uh, I'm gonna stick it right here. After that, Ralph's Club Elixir from Ralph Lauren. And this is, <laughs> this is another one that I think is very good. Yes, uh, the overwhelming majority of Elixir fragrances are very well done, which is why people get excited when a new Elixir is announced. If brands were putting out consistently fragrances with the Elixir name that didn't meet expectations, people wouldn't really be excited about them. But they keep exceeding expectations for the most part, which is what makes this very difficult. Because as I said, this one, I like. This one, I also like. This one, I really like. And yet there are fragrances above it. A lot of fragrances above it. The why though, that, that's a disappointment. So this one is gonna run you $140 for a 75 mil size bottle, which all things considered, as far as elixir price points go, not too bad. Getting 15 more milliliters than this and this, for less than either of those. So this is a sweet leather fragrance with a good amount of iris in there. A little cardamom off the top, smells great, really classy. You've also got lavender in the mid, olibanum in the base, a really well done scent, a good performance there as well, which this also has really good performance, by the way. Ralph's Club in general is a line that I think is better than it gets credit for. Across the whole line, you've got great versatility, huge compliment factor. This one is gonna be the classiest of the bunch, and it's just a really well done iris leather scent. Is this one super unique? Kind of yes and no. There are parts of the fragrance where you can maybe say, well, this is a little bit similar to that, a little similar to that, but it doesn't smell exactly like anything else out there. The next fragrance is the Scent Elixir from Hugo Boss. My wife loves this fragrance. Really, really likes it. I like it too. I like it a lot. How many times am I going to say that? And yet there are five fragrances above this one. This will be on the top 10 best releases of this year list for sure. But I am a fan of the scent, of the, the scent line. So maybe not a huge surprise that I enjoy this one. Has a creamy sort of sweetness that smells quite different from everything else here. So if you have all 10 of the fragrances featured today, you go down, smell each one of them. There are a couple that use vanilla in similar ways where you could be like, oh, okay, well this has something kind of like that. But this one, it's its own thing. As soon as you smell this, you know, oh, that's the scent. And for what it's worth, it's actually really unique. I mean, the only other thing that smells kind of similar to it is another The Scent fragrance, which is uh, The Scent Magnetic, and that one is good also. But between the two, I think I would take this one. Oh, and another thing, big performance. This stuff will fill up a room wick. <laughs> it has great longevity, great projection, so you don't need to spray too much for it to really catch people's attention. There is an issue with this, as far as retail price comparisons. This one, as of when I'm shooting this video, you have to buy, if you're in the US anyway, from fragrance discounters or from places like eBay or uh, a couple other like random stores online have them. And uh, it typically runs between like 110 and 125 for 100 mil, which is way cheaper than these here. Uh, I'm assuming that if this came out in the US at retail, it would probably be priced around 140 for 100 mil. But unfortunately, right now, uh, you can't find it at like Macy's or something like that. Still though, smells great, big compliment puller, really well done. All right, we're in the top five. Number five, One Million Elixir. And this is one that's grown on me a good amount. I didn't dislike it initially, but I would say that my first impressions were stronger on the positive side with like the scent elixir, for example, than one million elixir. This one is gonna run you $150 for a 100 mil size bottle at full 
retail. But again, at discounters, everything is gonna be a bit less. Still, full retail, 150 bucks for a 100 mil size bottle, puts that in a very favorable position against a lot of these others as far as the cost per milliliter. And this one is going to be a bit of a vanilla forward fragrance. That's not the only thing going on, but it has a good amount of vanilla and it's really well done. It is pretty sweet, like you would expect from a 1 million fragrance. It's not gonna let you down there if that's what you're after. We've got some apple off the top, gives you a nice little fruity touch when you initially spray this on. Then it has rose as it dries down. That vanilla I talked about before with some tonka gives it a little bit of a creamy scent profile, but again, sweet pretty much the whole way through. Really good performance, like you would expect from a Paco Rabanne. 1 million, so it's gonna project well, it's gonna last a long time, it's gonna get you noticed. And uh, it's also drawn some comparisons to the Stronger With You scent line, though uh, I think that the side by side, they've got definitely enough differences that you wouldn't think it's redundant to them both. The 1 million Elixir, right there, number five. Number four is from Hugo Boss once again, and it is Boss Bottled Elixir. Now I do have Boss Bottled Triumph Elixir, I thought about putting that in here, but then it would be a top 11 and I'd have, you know, bottled elixir and triumph elixir. So I decided to move that one out. But as more elixirs come out, if I do this again, I'll, I'll just go ahead and toss it in here also. Now this one's priced really well, 140 bucks retail for a 100 mil size bottle. So that's gonna be basically at retail, the cheapest one we've talked about because the scent kind of doesn't count. I love Boss Bottled Elixir. It's a woody, spicy fragrance, very masculine. Uh, it smells extremely well done, much better than you might expect from a, a Boss Bottled release, which I've said this before, but for me, Boss Bottled Elixir, along with to a lesser extent Bottled Pacific, helped elevate the way that I was viewing Boss Bottled releases because for a number of years, it felt like they were just churning out yearly releases, Boss Bottled releases that didn't really matter that much. It felt like they were gonna be there for a year. They were going to be okay, you know, like decent, but not anything great. Although they did have a couple here and there that came out over the years that were pretty well done, but it didn't really feel like there was a lot to get excited for when a Boss Bottled Flanker was announced. It was like, oh, okay, um, that's cool. Another one, I'll, I'll pick it up when it hits discounters. You know, I'll see how it is down the road, that kind of deal. Then Bottled Elixir came out and it was like, where, where has this been? You know, where has this Boss Bottled been? Like, give me more of that. Great, great release. I love this stuff. It does sell out pretty quickly at discounters when it comes into stock and it's because it does smell awesome. And this one is just, just barely outside the top four. Absolutely fantastic. And that one is gonna be more fall and winter. Actually, most of these are gonna be more of a fall and winter type scent profile. Part of that I feel like is because when you have the Elixir name, that's like the halo, the best fragrance from that line. That's the way it's been approached anyway. You know, the best quality, the deepest, the richest, et cetera, et cetera. That's kind of how it's been approached. And so when you have that warm, sweet, spicy, woody, bold, that kind of scent, uh, those are typically better for cool weather. So fall, winter, fall, winter, fall, winter, spring, fall, winter, probably wouldn't go summer, but you know. This one, kind of interesting, spring, fall for me, you could pull it off summer or winter though, depending on how many sprays you do. Uh, fall, winter really, and kind of year round. All right, guys, we are in the top three. If you know me, you already know what three fragrances are here. And honestly, there haven't been that many Elixir releases yet. So you probably already know what these are just by process of elimination. Number three, Invictus Victory Elixir. I love Victory Elixir. Now, the vanilla that's in here, the way that it comes across, I should say, is a little reminiscent of the vanilla here. So that's what I was saying with Cobalt Elixir over here, that that vanilla, you know, a little reminiscent of some other things, even the color scheme here, a little bit similar, isn't it? But this one is better. The way that it's done to my own taste is just almost perfect. Vanilla Tonka, a little lavender, some incense in there, cardamom as well, has a great 
effervescent, sparkling, almost carbonated, fizzy sweetness in there that just absolutely rocks. Really grabs attention, lasts for a long time, projects like a beast. Retail for that 150 for 100 mil size bottle. So kind of what would be considered, I think, average pricing for an elixir style fragrance nowadays. Not too high, not too low, and I'll roll with it. The 150, I would, if I, if I dropped that right now and busted it, I would buy it at retail again, if the only place to buy it was at retail. Absolutely adore this stuff. Fall and winter time staple for me. Victory Elixir is fantastic. I loved Victory. Really, 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 really loved it. I like this more. Okay, so here is where it gets impossibly difficult. Uh, my top two are, are really just 1A and 1B. I, I don't feel like one is really that much better than the other. And depending on which day you catch me, I'll pick a different fragrance. It's whatever mood I'm in, whatever I'm wearing, whatever I'm doing, wherever I'm going, right? So I don't feel like the one that I'm gonna show you next is necessarily any worse than the one I'm gonna show you after. So yeah, it's, it's, it's 1A and 1B for me, but that kind of screws everything up. So I guess this is number two, but again, tomorrow, you ask me, uh, this one could be number one. Sauvage Elixir. Ah, uh, yeah, Sauvage Elixir. This is so stupid good. And it's a little bit similar in terms of like the idea behind the fragrance. These two, Boss Bottle Elixir and Sauvage Elixir. This one is also spicy, woody, masculine, very powerful. This stuff projects forever, lasts forever. I feel bad about this. I, I just want to put this in. These are both one. These are both one. This one and the next one. Extremely popular and very expensive also. $180 for this size, 60 mils. So same pricing as the Y over here. So why the gulf between the Yves Saint Laurent and the Dior, because Sauvage and Y are like, you know, those two lines have been going at it ever since Y came out. And you've got a lot of people who say Sauvage is the best blue fragrance, other people who say Y is the best blue fragrance, Blue de Chanel the best blue fragrance, et cetera, et cetera. Why the Gulf? Well, like when I talked about this one, it doesn't do a whole lot different. It's a tweak here, a tweak there, a tweak here, a tweak there to essentially the Y-EDP, Y-Lip Parfum DNA style. But I don't think it improves on that DNA. It costs way more than those other Y fragrances do. And it doesn't really go out there and try to shake things up at all. It's very content to play it extremely safe. It's like, oh, well, this is the Y stuff and it, it sells pretty well, so let's just Okay, that's good. That should probably sell. Let's go put that on the market for 180. Job done. Whereas with Sauvage Elixir, it feels like they did take a chance because that does not smell like Sauvage. You smell that side by side with Sauvage Eau de Toilette or have somebody smell them side by side and they don't see that it's the same fragrance. You know, you do it blind, then they're gonna be like, oh, these are two completely different things. These don't smell similar. Because Dior was like, let's do something different. Let's do something elevated, something bolder, something richer. They took ideas from the past. They made it modern. They put it there. You can tell the quality is higher with Sauvage Elixir compared to the Sauvage fragrances that came before it. So you feel like you're getting something for the extra money you're spending. Over here, you don't really feel that, or at least I don't. So yeah, Sauvage Elixir crushes Y Elixir. And I'm going to put it right there. That is 1B. 1A is that one. Le Mal Elixir from Jean-Paul Gaultier. That is one of the most addictive scents that I have ever smelled. And I have smelled thousands of fragrances. I own thousands of fragrances. It's stupid how much stuff that I have smelled over the years. This thing for whatever reason, it tickles a part of my brain. I'm just like, <laughs> ooh, just keep going back. So watch the price on this one, all blinged out and everything. Must be pretty expensive. Actually, no. Full retail, 125 mils, 4.2 ounce size bottle, 152. I know that's not super cheap, but you're getting 25 milliliters more versus the 100 mil size bottle that most things use 
and it costs about the same or less, depending on which one we're talking about. The Invictus we just talked about, 150 for 100 mils, 152 for 125. That means this is cheaper than that per milliliter. Same thing with the 1 million, same thing with Boss Bottled, same thing with really pretty much everything here, other than the scent, because it's kind of weird. This per mil, the cheapest fragrance here. Or you can get a 2.5 ounce, 75 mil size bottle, which is what I have right there for 119. And again, that is full retail. It's similar to La Malda Parfum that came before it. This one though, a little sweeter, less uh, powder to it. That one is also absolutely amazing, by the way. That's no shade toward La Malda Parfum. You guys know that, I love that. Wonderful sweetness and warmth with this one, fall and winter time, you cannot go wrong. It smells amazing. So really, if I had to break this out into like tiers, it would probably be like tier one right here, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, kind of like that. It's like two, two, three, two, one. This is not to say though that I would wear this 10 times out of 10, depending on which day it is. Again, like I said before, I could wanna wear that one or that one or this one or this one, it depends. But that is how I personally would rank these um, as of right now today. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. Let me know which of the elixirs is your personal favorite. And I don't think you can go wrong with really any of these for the most part. Thank you guys, stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.